Welcome back to the Crypto Bot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, Bitcoin is rejecting from this critical area of resistance while the price is continuing to cool off in the short term from overbought territories, while Ethereum has just done the same thing here in the short term, but is now entering into oversold territories. So I'll be talking about all of that and more later in the video, so definitely watch to the end. First of all, taking a look at the four day Bitcoin chart, and right now the super trend indicator is still sitting in the red. So, over the last one day, not much has changed on this chart right here. And if we're taking a look at the two day time frame, right now the price of Bitcoin is technically still within the larger bearish trend, forming lower highs and lower lows, at least as of right now. We've not really reversed out of this larger bearish trend. But of course, during the larger bearish trend, as I've been saying here on the channel, we can see shorter term bullish trends during the larger bearish trend. And this line of support is still sitting at around 52,500. And this line of resistance is still sitting at just underneath 68,000. And if we're taking a look at this daily Bitcoin chart right here, as of right now, the price of Bitcoin is perfectly rejecting from this exact area of resistance that I've already been warning about over the last few days. And this area of resistance is once again sitting in between around 60.2K to 61.2K. So around 60 to 61,000 approximately and that's pretty much exactly where we rejected from because essentially what resistance is, it's basically just a lot of people interested in selling Bitcoin around a certain price range or a certain area on the price chart. And that's basically what we had right here. The price obviously played out this shorter term bullish trend. And it's possible that if we bounce very soon, we could remain within this shorter term bullish trend during the larger bearish trend. But ultimately we ran into this area of resistance where a lot of sell pressure came into play, which was to be expected. And now if we end up seeing a confirmed breakout above this area of resistance at some point later on, then in that case, if we see a confirmed breakout above around 61.2K, then the next short-term resistance would be sitting at close to 63,000 based on the volume profile indicator. And above that, we have some major resistance at around 64,500. And as for short-term support, we're currently finding a small amount of support close to 59,000. But below this level right here, we have this major area of support based based on previous support in the price of Bitcoin, sitting in between around 56 to 57,000 approximately. And once again, for as long as the price of Bitcoin can see some sort of bounce very soon in the next few days, it's possible that we can remain within this shorter term bullish trend, kind of like what we saw just here or just here, for example, where of course, during these shorter term bullish trends, we did see some smaller setbacks along the way during the bullish trend. But zooming out, those shorter term bullish trends occurred within a larger bearish trend. But the point where we would flip a lot more bearish again in the shorter term and basically point towards the continuation of the larger bearish trend would be if we break below this area of support in between around 56 to 57,000. If we start breaking back below around 56 to 57,000, then in that case, we would flip a lot more bearish again in the short term, pointing towards the continuation once again of the larger bearish trend. And if we're zooming further into the short term, looking at the four hour Bitcoin chart, of course, not only was the price running into major resistance that I've already been warning about over the last few days, the price also confirmed an overbought signal on the four hour time frame with the RSI confirming into overbought territories on the four hour time frame, as I also warned about over the last few days. So like I've been saying over the last few days, we should be expecting a bit of a short term cool off either way here in the short term, most likely in the form of a short term pullback or at least some choppy sideways price action. And so far, we've seen exactly that as expected. But if we're looking at the trend here on the four hour time frame, we can see at least for now, we're still seeing higher lows and higher highs, which is technically a shorter term bullish trend here on the smaller time frames. So for as long as we're holding above these lows right back here at around 56 to 57,000, give or take, technically speaking, we can remain within the shorter term bullish trend if we see a bounce very soon in the coming days. And so in the imminent short term right here, we're looking relatively neutral at the moment, considering we're seeing a bit of a cool off 
off from overbought territories and a rejection from major resistance. But technically speaking, we have not yet reversed out of this short term bullish trend right here. And just before taking a look at some other important Bitcoin charts today, first, if you want to trade these moves in the price of Bitcoin or any other crypto, personally, I take most of my trades over on Bybit. So I'll make sure to leave a link to Bybit down below in the description and in the pinned comment. And if you use that link down below this video to make a Bybit account and deposit on that account, then you can get up to a $30,000 deposit bonus, but only if you use the link down below this video. And with that being said, if you use the link below this video, it'll take you to this page right here which is a massive lucky draw happening right now over on Bybit where you could potentially win up to $100,000 just by trading crypto using the link down below this video. And so if you're going to be trading crypto anyway, you might as well check this out. Once again, first link down below this video. But for whatever reason, if you cannot access Bybit or if you cannot KYC on Bybit, there is Bitinex, which is another crypto exchange similar to Bybit, but you don't need KYC for Bitinex, which means if you're in the US or the UK, for example, or another country where you might not be able to access Bybit, you can access Bitinex. So I'll leave a link to Bitinex as well in the description and in the pinned comment. And if you use that link down below this video to make a Bitinex account, you can get up to a 5.5k deposit bonus. And only if you use that link, you can get an exclusive 10% discount on all trading fees on the Bitinex exchange forever if you use that link below this video to make your Bitinex account. And so as another option out there other than Bybit, once again, there's Bitinex. Links down below if you want to claim those extra bonuses. And with that being said, if we're taking a look at the Bitcoin liquidation heat map, obviously over the last one day, we saw that little rejection here from that major resistance, but we still have a decent amount of liquidity building to the upside, sitting close to around 60 to 61,000, more specifically around 60.7K to around 61.1K with most of the liquidity sitting at around 60.8K. And so like I just said earlier, if we see a bounce very soon here in the short term over the next one or two days, if that happens, then there is still the possibility that we could come back up to continue the short term bullish trend and wipe out this liquidity sitting just underneath 61,000, which could result in a small short squeeze if we cross above around 61,000. But ultimately for this to now happen, we need to see a bounce very soon in the next one or two days, because if we do not see a bounce very soon, we now actually have liquidity starting to build to the downside. First of all, we do have a decent amount of liquidity right now sitting just above 57,000, more specifically around 57.2K to 57.3K. And so if we do not see a bounce very soon, and if we continue this short-term cool-off below around 57.2K, then obviously that would be bad news here in the short term because that would liquidate a bunch of long positions right here and essentially result in some more sell pressure pushing the price further to the downside. And in that case, we have more liquidity to the downside at around 55,000 to 55 and a half thousand. And so this is really a make or break moment for Bitcoin, at least when we're talking about the short term, because like I just said, there is still the possibility that we can remain within the short term bullish trend if we see a bounce very soon over the next one or two days. So the next one or two days will be very telling for what we could be expecting over the next few weeks, potentially. But either way, what I'm seeing right now for Bitcoin is that right now we are lacking bullish momentum. So even if we see a bit of a bounce very soon and remain within this short term bullish trend, we don't really have a lot of bullish momentum, at least for now. And obviously we still have major resistance above the price. So even if we see a bounce here in the short term, still expect the price to struggle around these areas of resistance. And with that being said, taking a look at Ethereum on the three day time frame right now, we're still holding above this major area of support in between around 2150 to 2.2K. But technically speaking, even though we're still holding above that massive area of support, we're still within the larger bearish trend, as I've already been saying for a long time now on the channel, because the price is still technically forming lower highs and lower lows, which is bearish price structure here on the larger timeframes. And we also just rejected from some short term resistance right here at around 2450 to 2.5K, which was previous support and previous resistance and is once again acting as resistance. And if we actually saw a confirmed breakout back above 2.5K, in that case, we have major resistance right here at around 2.8K. And if we're taking a look at the daily time frame, technically speaking, this bullish divergence is still currently active because we've not yet confirmed an invalidation signal to invalidate the 
bullish divergence. But with that being said, it's clear that it is starting to wear off already because usually a bullish divergence on the daily time frame lasts for usually around a couple of weeks before it starts kind of wearing off. And so far, this bullish divergence has already been playing out over the last one and a half weeks approximately. But like I just said, at least for now, we've not yet confirmed the invalidation of the bullish divergence because in order to invalidate a bullish divergence, we need to see a confirmed lower low in the candle closes in the price or in the RSI or at least seeing a breakdown in the RSI below this line of support. Those are invalidation signals. And as of right now, we have not yet confirmed any of those invalidation signals. And so it's similar to what I said for Bitcoin in the short term, where the price of ETH is kind of at a make or break moment because we're very close to potentially invalidating the bullish divergence, but it has not happened as of right now. So there's still the possibility that we could continue to play out the bullish divergence if we bounce very soon. And something similar can be said about the 12 hour time frame because right now, once again, we're seeing a bit of a pullback from running into major resistance close to two and a half thousand around 2450 to 2.5K is where we have some major resistance as I've mentioned over the last few days. And above that, we have more resistance at around 2550 give or take and more resistance at around 2.8K. And like I've also said over the last one and a half weeks, we have been playing out this bullish relief as a result of bouncing from oversold territories here in the 12 hour Ethereum RSI. But ultimately, this is not a bullish trend reversal signal, as I've been saying every day over the last one and a half weeks. So expect a bullish relief as we've played out already. But this is not a bullish trend reversal signal. It's still possible that we can remain within the much larger bearish trend like what we've seen in all of these previous examples. And if we're zooming further into the short term, looking at the three hour time frame, obviously over the last one day, we perfectly played out this overbought signal here in the three hour Ethereum RSI, which is something that I warned about in my last video before we saw the latest bearish price action. And so ultimately we just cooled off here. We saw a bit of a pullback from overbought territories. And in fact, just recently over the last few hours, we now confirmed an oversold signal here in the three hour Ethereum RSI. And now unlike Bitcoin, the price of ETH already broke the bullish price structure over the last one day with this latest pullback right here. We can clearly see this is a short term bullish trend forming higher lows and higher highs. And with this latest pullback right here, we basically dumped below all of these previous lows just here, confirming a new lower low, which is a break of the bullish price structure or short term bullish trend. But despite the fact that this has happened, of course, this also happened back here, but we confirmed an oversold signal back then. And what we saw after that oversold signal confirmed was a bit of a bounce over the next one or two days. So it is very likely that over the next one day, potentially, we could see basically a slowdown from this bearish momentum in the form of a slight bounce or perhaps just some sideways price action. So this does not necessarily mean we're going to see a lot of bullish price action. It just means that we're at potentially a local low just for the next few hours or the next day, because this is only talking about the short term. So it's not telling us that we're at the bottom, but we're due to see perhaps a little bit of a bounce or a relief here in the short term, because as the price either plays out some slight bullish price action or neutral price action, that helps to reset the RSI back towards the upside, towards more neutral levels, which can actually give us some more room to the downside later on, kind of like what we saw back here, for example. And so that's what I'm now expecting here in the short term for the price of ETH. And with that being said, if we're taking a look at the price of Solana on the daily time frame over the last one to two days, we perfectly rejected exactly from this area of resistance that I've already been warning about here on the channel, sitting in between 138 to 143. So like I've been saying, expect a lot of sell pressure right around there. And that's exactly what we saw as expected. And so far we've pulled back almost back down towards this major area of support. And once again, expect a lot of buyers in this area right here in between 120 to 128. And similar to the bullish divergence for Ethereum, despite the rejection from key resistance, this bullish divergence on the daily time frame for Solana is not yet invalid. So technically speaking, we can still play out the bullish divergence if we see a bounce very soon, perhaps from this support right here, because in order to invalidate the bullish divergence, we need to see a break below this previous low in the candle closes in the price or see a breakdown in the RSI, either below this previous low or basically breaking below this ascending line of support. Those will be invalid 
invalidation signals. And so far, we have not seen any of those invalidation signals actually confirm. And so overall, Solana is basically just within a bit of a sideways price range, chopping around sideways in between this area of support at around 120 to 128 and this area of resistance at around 138 to 143. So the price is just chopping around between support and resistance for the time being here in the short term. And these other areas of resistance to the upside have not changed over the last one day. So if you want to know more about these other areas, then check out my last video here on the channel. And with that being said, if you want to trade these moves in the price of any crypto, once again, check out those links down below this video to claim those extra bonuses. And if you want to actually know how to trade crypto, no matter if the price is bullish, bearish, or chopping around sideways like right now, then make sure to watch these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how you can profit from bullish or bearish price action using long positions or short positions. And the video in the bottom left shows you how you can easily profit from choppy sideways price action. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.